Hey there, we are so thankful that you have made the choice to watch one of ACC's messages online. You know, as you are watching and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. You're sitting at your phone or your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag you belong at ACC as God is teaching you different things during this message. But you know, we say you belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means we would love to have you join us during one, our, one of our Sunday services at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. here at 710 Aqua Heart Road. So we would love to have you jump into this message and we're believing God is gonna do some awesome things in your life today. We actually jump right in uh, to our message. Typically we have like a message bumper. Uh, if you were paying attention last week, we kicked off a brand new series called Released. Uh, but we're actually going to pause. I asked our staff and our creative team, I said, what if we just uh, stopped for a week? And what if we addressed something a little different? In light of all that's going on and all the, the thoughts going on in your head, I don't know if you're like me, but I keep waking up in the morning thinking I, I'm in the middle or I just had a really bad dream and thinking that, that can't be actually my life right now. But it is, right? We are actually living this. And I keep hearing the word stay. I don't know about you, but it's like stay home, stay away, stay, you know, this, stay that. And everyone just kind of like uh, the, this whole concept of, of staying in your home, it's an important thing, right? So stay, stay, stay. And so I was, I was looking in scripture and I found a passage that I want to share with you because it mentions staying and it mentions a crisis. So these two things aren't uh, completely abnormal in Scripture. These, these are things that someone has experienced something like this in the past. And what if we, as a church, could learn from those experiences? And I want to ask you to go in your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Now let me, let me challenge you for a moment. I know that because we're not meeting in person and right now you're sitting on your couch, you're a lazy boy, you're laying in your bed, you're thinking, right, I don't need to go get my Bible. Nope. Uh-uh. Get up, go grab your Bible, put it on your lap, get your Bible out, out, whatever it takes. I want you to follow along today. I want you to stay engaged and limit distractions and really listen to what God is wanting to say to you. I want you to know something real fast before we dive in. As the lead pastor of this church, I, I, maybe I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Matt, uh, the lead pastor here at ACC. And I want you to know whether we've met each other a million times and we, we know each other's names or I've never met you before, I love you. And I really, truly want what's best for you. And in saying that, I want you to have a Bible open on your lap right now because what's in this book is unchanging truth that can change your life. So grab your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And we're going to skip down all the way to verse 26. We're going to kind of skip down to the bottom and then work our way back up here for a moment. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, verse 26. It says this. It says, because of the present crisis. So there's the word, the word crisis that we're all talking about right now. We're, we're in the middle of a present crisis, right? Because of the present crisis, I think it's best to remain where you are. Remain is just another word for stay. Hey, because of the present crisis that you're in right now, it's a good idea to stay. That's essentially what Paul is saying right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 26. Now, when you first look at this chapter in your Bible, in fact, if you look at like the, the, the headlines above, you know, different paragraphs in your Bible, it seems to be a chapter about marriage and singleness. But I want to challenge you to actually see something bigger in this chapter than those two things. In fact, if you go, uh, let me show you how often the word stay or, or a, a variation of the word stay appears in this chapter. In verse 8, you see the word stay. In verse 11, you see the word remain. In verse 17, it says to continue, right? It, it, we continue to have this. In fact, let's look at verse 17. It says, each of you should continue to live in whatever situation the Lord has placed you. Again, in light of the present crisis, continue, stay, remain. And then in verse 20, we see it again. At 1 Corinthians 7, 20, it says, Yes, each of you should remain as you were when God called you. Each of you right now need to just hit the pause button and stay for a moment. And it's easy to look at this passage and think, well, it's just about, if you read it, if you read the verses in between and you get the context, it seems to be Paul is talking to married people and he's saying, stay married. And he's talking to unmarried people and he's saying, stay unmarried. But it's actually bigger than that. If you look throughout this chapter, you see that he's talking about 
not just marital status. He's talking about uh, whether you're circumcised or you're not circumcised, whether you're a slave or whether you're free. Whatever situation you currently find yourself in, in light of the present crisis, stay. And that brings us back to verse 26. Because of the present crisis, I think it is best to remain where you are. Let me address what the present crisis that Paul is talking about here. What is he, you know, what's going on right now? What is the context, the the historical context of 1 Corinthians chapter 7? A few different things are are going on. Uh, There's been a a, a lot of of fire and and devastation and loss of property by fire. There's also sickness, which I think we can all relate with right now with COVID-19. There's sickness kind of going around in this uh, time period. Uh, And... Even worse, Emperor Nero is like the brand new emperor over, over the, the Roman Empire. And, and because of all the things that are going on, because of the fires and because of the sickness and because of all these other things, people are looking to him and trying. he's trying to find somebody, somebody to blame. And guess who he picks? He picks the Christians and the Jews. Emperor Nero is specifically persecuting Christian believers because of all the, so you add all this up, you got fires and you got sickness and you got all sorts of things. And now just because you're a Christian, this, this evil emperor is persecuting you. This is the present crisis. So when Paul says in light of the present crisis, because of the present crisis, it's best to remain as you are. As we go throughout the rest of chapter 7, it's just more of the same. It continues to say, just stay, remain, continue. And I want to take this theme. In fact, kind of the big idea I want us to, to, to borrow from this is in this season of crisis, I want to invite you, Arundel Christian Church, to stay in the present. Right now, there's all sorts of other places your mind wants to go. There's all sorts of other places your body wants to go. There's all sorts of things that you're longing for right now. Maybe you just want things to be back to normal like I do. That's awesome. You pray for that. But I want to encourage you out of Scripture, in light of the present crisis, maybe God is challenging us as a church to take a season of of remaining. And here's eight different ways I want to challenge you to stay. Here's eight ways I think that you are called right now to stay in light of the present crisis we're in. Here's the first one. The first one is to stay calm. Stay calm. Proverbs 29.11 says, Fools give full vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. Now, listen, in light of all that's going on right now, it is very easy for you to uh, to pretend to be calm, you know, to be that guy who sees a fire and says, stay calm. No, actually, you have an opportunity to stay calm. And not to give full vent to all the things that are going on in your head, but instead, uh, not act like a fool, but instead to just remain calm. It says it's best to, to, to bring calm in the end. I uh, had an opportunity to spend some uh, Wednesday and Friday with you all online. It's this thing that uh, I'm doing called Quarantine with Matt. Uh, and in that first one on, on Wednesday, we had an opportunity to talk about this concept. It's in uh, Romans 8. And, and one of the things I like to say to people is, when life isn't great, read Romans 8. And we had a, a moment to look at one of my favorite verses in Scripture. And here's what it is. Romans 8, 28. It says, And we know that in all things... God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Now, I I pray that that passage of scripture would bring some calm into your heart right now. That in light of all that's going on, you're able to stay calm because you know that God works all things together for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So that's the first one, is to stay calm. Here's the second one I want to invite you into, is to stay obedient. Not just to stay calm, but to stay obedient in light of all that's going on right now. Obviously, we want to stay obedient first and foremost to God, but we are also called in a season like this to stay obedient 
to the governing authorities over us. I want to address for a moment, we were supposed to be doing this Sunday, uh, you know, live from the porch with drive-in style. We're going to have cars pull in and tune your FM radio, and it was going to be awesome. We were, we had all sorts of ideas floating around, and uh, I was excited about it. I will tell you, my staff will tell you, I was the last person on board with canceling. But at the end of the day, when we had reached out to the governor's office and we told them, listen, we're not going to do this if we don't have your blessing. Uh, in fact, the day that we canceled, uh, uh, Governor Hogan had just made a, a press, uh, had done a press conference and he said, listen, I'm encouraging all Marylanders to stay home if you don't have a good reason to leave. I'm thinking, how do, we, how do we justify asking people to come out of their homes, even if they're staying in their cars in our parking lot? Let's get the blessing of our governor. And in, in going through that process, we, we found that we didn't have the blessing. and We were asked actually to consider not doing it. And we want to remain obedient. We want to stay obedient in this season to those who are working hard. Working. I, I can't imagine how many hours right now our government leaders are working to help lead us through this crisis. There's a really important thing I want to, uh, a verse I want to share with you in Romans chapter 13. It says, everyone must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God. And those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. Here's what this verse ultimately means. It means that when you are not obedient to the governing authorities over you, you are being disobedient to God. And as a church and as a leadership over this church and your overseer team and staff, we want to make sure that we are being obedient not only to God but to the leaders over us. And as long as they're not asking us to do something immoral or something that is clearly in, uh, you know, outside of the bounds of Scripture, we want to do our best to make sure that we are complying and, and being obedient to that. Because not doing so would be disobedient to God. Here's the third thing I want to challenge you to stay. I want you to stay in the present. I want you to stay in in the present. Let me me talk you through this one for a moment. Uh, One of the best ways, instead of me talking you through it, let's see what, what Jesus says about it. In Matthew 6, verse 34, Jesus says, Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow brings its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. I don't know about you, but right now, my family, we're just trying to figure out how to do just one more day of staying all close and huddled and everyone kind of being together and wanting to go out but not being able to. And the best thing to do is just, man, today's got enough troubles. Why in the world would you, would you let yourself wander into the future, into the unknown, into the worry and the anxiety that exists outside of what God has given you to handle today? Stay in the present Don't wander with your mind. Don't do it. Listen, and staying in the present doesn't mean don't use uh, certain precautions. It doesn't mean, uh, obviously, there's certain things that God's given us wisdom and a mind to to see maybe something that we might need to prepare for. It doesn't mean just don't worry about that line for toilet paper. Now, maybe, maybe you do. I don't know. But ultimately, when it comes to fear and anxiety, make sure your mind stays connected and grounded to the present. Because here's the thing, here's the thing about our story. This, my story has some elements of it that are completely identical to your story. And here's how it works. If you are a follower of Christ, I know my story right now. I know where I am right now in the present. You know where you are right now in the present. Now listen, you also know, and I also know because of God's word, how it all ends we, we know that at the end, Jesus wins. That all of it is, uh, at the end, God is the, comes out victorious. We know the ending and we know the present. We don't know the middle part. So why in the world would we wander into that area and allow all the fear and anxiety and worry to take over? You see, focusing on tomorrow is, is just living in fear. And I want to invite you not to do that. And not only should you stay in the present, but remember in this season that you can actually stay present. All right, this is kind of a, if you want, number three, part B. You can stay not in the present also, but you can can stay present 
in your family right now. You can, you can stay in God's word. You can slow down and you can spend time with your kids and you can tackle a project and you can actually just stay present with the people that you're spending time around right now. Here's, here's number four. I want to invite you into this. Is to stay honest. Here's what I mean by this. It seems like everywhere I turn, every Facebook post I look at, every Instagram post, every, I mean, you, people are just kind of rattling off things that they've heard might happen. Hey, this, I've heard that this is going to happen. I've heard that this is getting shut down. I heard this and I heard that. And, and maybe some of those things are based in fact. And if it's, it's facts, that's really helpful for us. But I, I want to encourage us to avoid gossip when it comes to the crisis that we're in right now. If you just heard something from someone who heard something from someone, like just keep it to yourself. It's not helpful right now. We want to stay honest. Proverbs 18, 13 says, Spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. If you just come uh, to an understanding of what happened, what you think might be true, and you start sharing it with people before actually getting the facts, it says that that is shameful and foolish. Don't be a fool. Another way we do this, another way we kind of break away from honesty and into the the realm of dishonesty is we, we, we play the blame game. We like to point at different politicians and different people and the neighbors across the street and we're, we're doing all these things. We're pointing fingers at other people. It's their fault. And instead of just focusing on what we know to be true, don't play the blame game. And when it comes to the facts, I wanted to share with you, some people have been reaching out to me like, Matt, what are, from your perspective or from a leadership of the church perspective, what are the facts And I think we all know that we don't have all of them, right? We don't know when it's going to end. We don't know all the things. There's probably certain things that that people aren't saying. I don't know all the facts. And I don't want to speculate because, right, we're going to stay honest. But here's what I do know. I know that uh, COVID-19, apparently, it, it sounds like the facts are that it's not scary for most people. Most people, if you were to, to get this uh, thing, your, your body would be able to fight it, and uh, our medical professionals would be able to, to handle it if there were beds open. And it's, it, for most people, it's not a scary thing. But here's another thing that we do know, is that it is very scary for some. There are some people whose bodies are, are not able to handle it maybe the same way yours is, and we know that to also be true. We know that a lot of people have lost their lives because of COVID-19. That's a fact, Right? So the, the third thing that we kind of know to be true is that right now, this concept of, of staying, of kind of quarantining, of, of trying to keep this distance between ourselves is so that we kind of control that, that curve. We, we can slow down the spread of this thing and allow more people to come out on the other end alive. Those are the facts. And anything above and beyond that that you're kind of making up is, is speculation. I want to encourage you to stay honest. Here's a fifth thing I want to encourage you to stay. I want you to stay connected to God. Listen, you probably have a greater opportunity right now than you've ever had in your life to stay connected to God. I'm serious. Like, I, I can't think of a time where we as, as a whole, as a world, have had more time to be able to stay connected to God. Philippians 4 has some really powerful passages that I want to point us to. And here in verse 6 and 7, it says this. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And that's such a powerful passage. It says, listen, don't worry about things. Instead, stay connected to God. Stay connected to a good father who has all things worked out for good. Stay connected to that God. Talk to him. Go to him with prayer. Right? It says, tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Stay connected to your father. And then, what are the results according to this passage? It says, then you will experience Peace. That is so powerful. Don't miss out on an opportunity 
to experience this peace. Stay connected to God, not just through prayer. I mean, let me, let me challenge you another way to stay connected to God. Right? First of all, about prayer, uh, in this season of not being able to be in person, sometimes we have this myth that we believe that the only way to pray right, is through, through words either coming out of your mouth or words kind of coming out of your head, right? That you think it, and you think it in, in whatever language you speak, or you speak it with your mouth in whatever language you speak, and that's how you pray. But did you know that you can pray through a text message? Do you know that you can send a text message to a friend and let them know, like you can just type out your prayer. And send it to them and let them know, I mean, listen, I believe that God can read your text messages, I believe he knows what's in your heart. I believe you can pray through singing. You can pray through writing. Write out your thoughts. Write those things down. God can follow your hand and read cursive. You have all sorts of opportunities to pray. You can pray through social media. You can go on Facebook right now and post a prayer. That's another incredible way to pray. But this, this concept in, in Philippians chapter 4, it seems like Paul is connecting this idea of worry with prayer and worry with connecting to God. And I, let me sh- show you why I think that is. In Philippians chapter 4, it just keep, keep going down the next two verses, verse 8 and 9. It says this, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Let me read that list again. All right, this is what you should be thinking about right now. If you want to stay connected to God, this is where you should be sending all of your thoughts in this way, all right? Fix your thoughts on what is true and what is honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. So just think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all that you have learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. It seems what Paul is doing here when it comes to staying connected to the heart of God, staying connected to God, is really you have kind of two things that kind of seem opposed to each other. You have this concept of of worry, right? Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition, present your request to God. So we have this thing called worry, and then we have this other thing called prayer, this, this idea of communicating and staying connected to God. Why are those two things kind of put together here in this passage? And let me tell you why. Because worry is essentially meditating on the wrong things, and prayer is an incredible opportunity you have to think about and meditate on things that are good, and to lift those up to God. So right now, you have an opportunity to stay connected to God through meditating on the right things and not meditating on the wrong things and worry. And another way we really stay connected to God is through spending time in His Word. Listen, every day right now, every day always, but especially right now, if you're like, listen, you always say always and you don't, Uh, I don't do it. Well, listen, right now, in light of everything that's going on, in light of the present crisis, I want you to stay connected more than ever to God, to spend time every day reading out of his word. Here's the sixth thing I want to invite you to do. Now, this one gets, again, really practical. I want you to stay healthy. (laughs) I want you to know right now... um, this, uh, this is the one I'm really preaching to myself. Uh, two weeks at home with, you know, we, we, we went out to BJ's before all this went down. We bought a bunch of food, right? We filled our pantry with all sorts of stuff. And we have opportunities, unlike any other time, to eat it. And we can turn on our, our Netflix, right? And we can uh, turn on our, our apps and we can, we can consume so much screen time that it's just going to turn our brains uh, to, 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 to mush. We can do all sorts of things right now that are super unhealthy for ourselves. We can eat way too much. We can sleep way too much. We can consume way too much. Uh, we, we, all sorts of stuff that you can do right now that's not good for you. And I want to encourage you to limit those things and to make sure that you are staying healthy. Really practical, but it's very important. And here's, here's another thing, to stay, number seven, to stay ready. Here, here's what I mean by staying ready. 
You know, in the season that, that um, Paul was writing to the church in Corinth, Right when In chapter 7, when he's saying to stay where you are right now, in this season of, of Emperor Nero doing all this persecuting of Christians, and all this persecution, all the sickness, all the stuff that's going on, what happened in the community historically is most people kind of uh, did what you and I are doing. They're kind of like keeping to themselves and, and, not, and then turning very selfish. I'm not saying you and I are doing that part, but uh, in general, in that season, most people became super selfish. They all worried about themselves. And except for, even in light of the persecution, Christians during this time that Paul was writing to the church in Corinth decided now is the best time to be ready to care about and serve those around us. And we have an opportunity to be ready. I don't know what might, what might come. I don't know what opportunities will present themselves tomorrow. I don't know if the church is going to put something up and say, hey, we got this opportunity and we're doing this big thing and we need you to help in this way or that way. And when and if that happens, and I assure you it's going to happen, be ready. Be ready. And the last one, number eight, is to stay in God's love. To stay in God's love. Do you feel like right now, just kind of with everything that's going on, that you're just, I don't know, do you feel a little invisible? Do you feel like so disconnected from people? Like, it's, it's how I feel. Every time I go up to like a paper towel dispenser, I feel invisible. You know what I'm talking about? And maybe you feel invisible right now. You feel like you're just having a hard time. Uh, just feeling connected to to what's happening. And I want you to, to, more than anything else, I want you to stay in God's love. I want you to know that more than anything else, God loves you. If you missed points one through seven, that's fine. Do not miss this one. Stay, remain in God's love. Remember we were talking about Romans 8, right? When life isn't great, read Romans 8. I want to ask you to do something a little weird. I know we're not here in this building together right now, and you are at your home. Maybe you're super comfortable. I'm going, to, I'm going to mess that up, all right? Here's what I want you to do. Wherever you are, I want to invite you to stand with me. I want you to, to stand with me for a moment, right, right where you are, and we're going to read a passage of Scripture together. So it's going to be on the screen. You're going to see the, the words of the verse. And I want you to, to read it out loud. I want you to say it with boldness. I want you to say it with so much confidence that you are absolutely positively sure that what you're reading is 100% true. That's the way I want you to read this. All right, and here, here it is. It's in Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. And here's how it starts. All right. It says, and I am convinced. Listen, I I hope hopefully you're standing by now. I want you to say those three words with me a few times, all right? And I am convinced. And I am convinced. Like I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's nothing that's gonna change my mind. I am convinced. You ready? I want you to say those words with that confidence. Let's read this together. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. We're going to read that last part again right where you are. You're standing. I want you to read it with confidence and change the word us. Change it to make it personal for you. All right? We're going to use the word me. Okay? Here here we go. It says, indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate me from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. No coronavirus, no unemployment, no quarantine, nothing in all of creation 
is able to separate you from the love of your God. Nothing. And I hope right now you're standing in confidence believing that right now. Nothing. Stay. Listen, church, stay. Stay in all those other things, but stay in the love of God. Don't forget how much you're loved right now. You might feel invisible. You might feel like God doesn't see you or he's not paying attention to your prayers. You might think, how would a good God allow this to happen? I just want you to remember to stay in God's love. And I get it. If you're worried right now, I just want you to understand, I, I get you. It, maybe you're worried about your finances. Uh, I know many of you right now, you are, are, you're not making as much money as you were three weeks ago because of uh, not being able to go to work right now. And you're just worried about what is this going to do and how am I going to pay these bills and how am I going to buy food and what, what, what is my life? Listen, I want you to know as a pastor of a church, you know, we have uh, about 1,500 people who call this place home. I, I want you to understand that just even as a pastor, as a leader of this church and understanding the finances of this place and what happens if people aren't giving generously anymore and what happens if this and what happens if that. And when it comes to like worrying about finances, listen, I, I understand you. I get it. But then there's also this other worry, right? So maybe you're worried about your health. Maybe the, the concept of what happens if I catch this thing, right? What happens if someone I know catches this thing? What if, what if I mean, and there's just a legitimate worries that, that seem very reasonable going on in your life right now. I want to share with you a real story, uh, something that happened just a few weeks ago. <clears throat> you know, I... Um, my, my background, before I came to ACC, I came out of a, a Baptist church. And it, traditionally, Baptist churches are a little bit more what we call cessationists, meaning uh, that when it comes to like the, the gifts of, of speaking in tongues and the gift of prophecy and some of these gifts that are like the supernatural gifts, uh, most cessationists just believe that God doesn't communicate that, in, that way anymore. But he, man, he's been challenging me over and over and over again these last few months challenging me to understand, do not put me in any sort of box that you got for me. Do not decide how I can and cannot communicate with my people. So I, I got this call, right? I had a terrible week, all sorts of things going on in my life, and I'm just like worried. It was even before like the, the a lot of this corona stuff came up. It was just a, like three weeks ago. It's kind of a, a thing, but it wasn't a thing yet. And I, I was, I had a bad week. And then uh, one of the guys who, who goes to our church, maybe you know him, John Hare, he drives for Uber. And he called me up uh, one day. I was at home. I answered my phone. And John said, hey, Pastor Matt, do you have a moment? And I said, yeah, man, what's going on? He said, I, I got something I need to tell you. And I said, okay, what is it? He said, I don't know what it means, but I was driving for Uber yesterday, and someone got in my car for, for an Uber ride. And he sat down and and the first thing he said to me was, hey, I'm a prophet, and I have a message for the leaders of your church. And I'm sitting there thinking, all right, John, like, what did they say? What, what, what are the, what's the message? And this, this prophet said that John, John's communicating this to me. He says, he, he said that there's a lot of change coming to your church, but not to worry because it's a really good thing. I'm thinking, what? You gotta be kidding me. Like, I, I already knew of change. We, we, have some, we have some staff change that we've just experienced, and we have this coronavirus stuff going on, and we have, like, change is like the word of the day right now. And, and I get this word, and John was gracious enough to call me and say, listen, there's some change coming. Don't worry because it's gonna be okay. And I wanna challenge you to, to borrow that, that confidence right now. Listen, don't worry, it's gonna be okay. Stay, stay connected to God's love. So what do we do with this? I wanna, I wanna give you a couple things. One, as you're asking God what you ought to do right now in light of these words I've, I've shared this morning, I wanna encourage you to so number one, stay faithful because God is good. Stay faithful right now. Make a commitment to staying committed to your relationship with God in all the ways we just mentioned, which really kind of leads us to our second thing, which is this. 
which of the stay statements that we talked about, uh, that, that we kind of uh, talked about this morning, which one do you need to cling to this week? Which one of these is it that you need to stay calm right now? Is that the one that you need to focus on? Do you need to stay obedient? There's something about you that just wants to kind of shirk the system right now. There, there's something about you maybe that, that's having a hard time staying in the present and you just keep wandering into the future, into worry and anxiety and fear. Maybe you're having a hard time staying honest and you just kind of are milking this thing. You love sharing stories with everybody about everything you hear and you're just like, man, causing all sorts of panic. Maybe you just need to stay honest. Maybe you're having a hard time staying connected to God right now. You're not spending any time on your knees. You're not spending time in his word. Maybe you're not staying healthy. Maybe you're doing great on the rest of these things, but you are spending too much time in your pantry, too much time on your phone. Maybe you're not staying ready. Maybe you just needed to be reminded this morning to stay in God's love. Which one of these do you need to cling to? And I wanna invite you to do that. Let's pray together. Father, I believe with all of my heart, you are, are good. For I am convinced, God, I am convinced that nothing in all creation, God, I am convinced that no COVID-19, that no unemployment, that no economic crisis, that no nothing can ever separate me and separate this church from your love. God, I just ask that you would help us all to, to lean into this idea of just staying right now to be in the present, to slow down, slow down our minds, slow down our hearts, slow down our words, and just embrace being present with you, a God who works all things together for good and knows exactly what he's doing. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we as a staff and as a church are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep down into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on a Sunday morning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. As a reminder, please remember, you belong at ACC.